Well, who better to continue this conversation with than former Detective Chief Inspector at the Metropolitan Police, Mike Neville. Mike, I mean, a lot of people have had the hairs stand up on the back of their neck looking at the sites uh, in London with those pro-Palestine protests, hundreds of thousands of people all coming out, supporting, uh, you know, a foreign ideological war, essentially. The police themselves saying, well, look, we don't know what we can clamp down on. We don't know if someone's shouting jihad, whether that is an offensive word, whether that's inciting violence. Uh, the law Law is there, but it needs clarifying. Are you sympathetic to that argument? No, I'm not at all. And I, and I say, uh, and I say uh, hello to Kevin from Dundee this time. Oh, of course, you're but always it, somewhere else. <laughs> but uh, it, I, it's, I agree with Kevin. It's always this uh, left wing, pro left wing uh, marches and whatever get a, a different treatment. So if you have, for example, you know, somebody saying in jihad, and the police apparently had experts there who were interpreting, oh, this just means an inner struggle. When you have a Christian preacher at uh, some LGBT event or outside a uh, tube station, uh, the police don't seem to have experts to interpret their view of the Bible there. They're simply arrested very quickly uh, and often released very quickly because there's no offences uh, disclosed. So the police seem to act in one way. If you look at the Notting Hill Carnival, if you dance around and smash up a bus shelter at the Notting Hill Carnival, that's uh, hijinks. If the Millwall supporters did it, of course, yeah. they'd be given mm. a serious battering and, and arrested. And so, and it really does, as the previous guest has highlighted, this isn't a matter for confidence in the police. It's at an all time low already. And the public see this. And, and they just, the vast silent majority are seeing the police acting uh, one way to one group and another to another, and this is just not good at all for British policing. And so Mark Rowley, as he meets co the Cobra politicians today, I mean, his viewpoint seems to be, oh, you know, the law uh, isn't able to help us, we need clarity. Well, uh, therefore, uh, Mike Graham actually uh, put a tweet out and the police came back to him because he put a tweet out saying this is disgraceful. There was someone uh, climbing all over Lloyd George's statue, which was subsequently spray-painted mm. uh, with graffiti, pro-Palestine pro graffiti. Uh, Alan said that was... Uh, or rather, Mike said that was uh, disgraceful. The police actually came back to him and said, oh, well, you see, Mike, the thing is, it's not actually illegal to climb on statues, so we do need more clarity as to what to do. Now, you'll know more about this, Mike, but my understanding of uh, the remit within which the police operate is this, when you were a serving officer, if you saw something that you suspected was either law-breaking actually happening or law-breaking about to happen, you move in, you arrest, don't you? It's as simple as that. Coppers aren't barristers. They don't need legal clarity. They just need to suspect that the law is being broken. Am I right? You're absolutely right, Kevin. So what the law says is if a police constable believes that somebody's about to commit an offence or is committing an offence, they have reasonable grounds to believe that, they can make an arrest. And too often we've seen with the other protesters like Just Up All, oh, we're not sure of this because the, some legis you know, some ruling at a court case said this or that. That's not the police's job to consider that. Are there reasonable grounds to believe somebody's been suspected of an offence? You can arrest them, you can put them before the court, and then the court has to decide if they are guilty or not guilty. But what you have with the police often is if it is a pro-left-wing cause, they don't use their powers of arrest in the same way, as you said, against anti-vaxxers, Christian uh, preachers, football fans, all these unfashionable things. And, and this just is not a good thing. And the public need to feel safe wherever they are. They don't he need people to be calling for holy war on the streets of London, but be told by the police that they're really talking about an inner struggle. You know, it's like me, if I was waving a swastika flag around London and said, oh, no, this is really just an ancient Hindu symbol of peace, <laughs> I'm sure that they would have me, I would be scooped up and arrested, rightly so. But they operate in this different way and it isn't good enough. I mean, the government's having to call an emergency meeting today about the real risk of uh, increased terrorism on our streets. When you see sites like that protest and so many people, uh, many of which don't seem to share our British values, what is the police operational complexity and the overlap with counter-terrorism with a mass gathering like that? 
Well, of course, what they'll have to consider is how many officers they put there. And they don't seem, as Kevin has observed, to put enough officers on this case. Also with that is you'd have to consider if if you're going to arrest people, how much trouble would it cause at that moment? So there's ways you can negate that, for example, by ho having officers equipped with uh, video equipment and sound equipment. You've got all the central London CCTV. So these things can be uh, recorded. And as we've seen, two people arrested because of uh, that sort of evidence. But it shouldn't be two people arrested. It should be 2,000. I was in charge of the... Uh CCTV for the investigation of the London riots and we arrested 4,000 suspects over time so this is what the police can do if there's a political will and I just just on the riot situation the day after the riots was almost an assumption in the Met's point police that oh we'll just sweep up and, and leave it and get on with it it wasn't until the acting commissioner was called in front of the prime minister and told you will sort this out that action was taken so hopefully the uh, this is what will happen with this uh, because it isn't good enough on the streets of London, and I particularly support the Jewish community, and they really do need to feel They're safe. They're feeling on terrified, our Mike, uh, and that's the uh, tragedy of all this. Is three hundred? There's less, mm. fewer than three hundred thousand Jewish people live in this country. They're British, and they're feeling terrified. Uh, a quick comment for you on, on something that I observed, which sounded extraordinary to me. I, I reckon. There was way over 100,000 in London alone on Saturday, probably 150,000, absolutely jam-packed. You couldn't move in Trafalgar Square all the way down Piccadilly, all the way down to Whitehall, absolutely packed. 150,000 people all day, seven arrests. That's extraordinary, isn't it? I absolutely agree with you, Kevin. It is ex extraordinary. You know, I was on, as a young police officer, I was on things like the poll tax rights, where there was a very different style of, of policing that people would have been arrested at, at that time. And it, I, we go back again to this uh, pro left wing bias. It needs to be got rid of. But you've got whole, I saw a report on Unilever, a private company, where it's been right taken over by a woke establishment and, and all the middle management are the same. And I put out, this is just like much of the public sector, just like the police. It's going to take a long time to change this round because it's it's infected the whole organisation and it's... It's not good for British policing, which was seen as wonderful throughout the world, without fear or favour. People wanted their police to be like our police. I'm not sure if that's, a, if that's the case these days. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Thank you, Mike Neville. It does seem we're entering some sort of era of national self-destruction.